Ladies and gentlemen, time for your headline super fight of the evening. And first to make his way to the glory ring, a fixture in the French circuit. He travels from Europe to compete on the sport's biggest stage. Here comes David Rada. David the Machine, Radoff, plenty of experience, but making his glory debut, comes in with a kickboxing record of 34, 15, and 3, with almost half of those wins by way of knockout, fighting out of Belfort, France, at the Panza Gym under coach Andre Panza. Here's a guy who admires marvelous Marvin Hagler and tries to emulate him in the ring, Stephen. That's a great guy to emulate because Marvin Hagler could switch stances, he could box, he could slug. Uh, but I'll tell you, Radif, he's going to want to blitz the notoriously slow starting Robert Thomas. Make this fight ugly. Get Thomas on the ropes. Blast with overhand punches and those big low kicks. Proud to enter the glory ring because he feels they bring together the best fighters from all over the world. One of his goals is to stay in glory and fight the best to be the best. Representing France, David the Machine Radif. This 22-year-old kickboxing phenom began his glory career by taking on the world's number one. Here is Robert Thomas. Just 22 years of age, Robert the White Dragon Thomas. Yes, hashtag I am an athlete. Well, he is, not me. He is a seven and three with five wins via form of knockout. Again, only one and two in glory, but we mentioned it earlier in the show, Stephen. He has uh, definitely been thrown to the proverbial wolves early in his glory career. In his debut, he faced middleweight Shut champion up. Artem Levin, went to decision losing, and then in his last fight, went to decision at glory 19 in February against Joe Schilling, coming up short in that fight as well, but losing means you're learning. Yeah, it really does. And if you look at his amateur career, I mean, he's only got 10 fights as a pro. 56 and six is an amateur. He's got to start faster though. He even said that yeah. to us when we met with him. He said he, he's in kickboxing, it's not a Muay Thai fight. You only have five rounds. You've got three rounds most of the time, unless it's a tournament. So, the feature attraction on this edition of the Glory Super Fight Series, Robert Thomas of Canada facing Francis David Radoff at middleweight. And Radoff is 12 years older, three inches shorter, and is on the short end of the reach stat by almost two inches. Here's hoping that his vast experience can magically pull this one out. My estimation, that's a very tall order. From the Magnus Arena on the campus of the University of Denver, it's time for the Glory Super Fight Series main event. It's time to hear once again from Timothy Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your headline super fight of the evening. Three rounds in the Glory Middleweight Division featuring a French veteran of over 50 fights and one of the brightest young talents the sport has to offer. This bout once again is sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association in cooperation with the Colorado State Boxing Commission. At the bell, your referee will be Adam Martinez. From the Magnus Arena in Denver, Colorado, to Glory fans watching around the globe, it's time for Glory! <laughs> Introducing first, standing on a right and fighting out of the black corner, a European kickboxing champion, also trained in Muay Thai. His professional record, 34 wins with 15 losses and three bouts scored even. 16 of those wins coming by knockout. At 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.81 meters. He weighed in at 187 pounds, 84.8 kilos. He's here tonight from Belfort, France. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing David the Machine Radder.
His opponent is a 2013 Thai Boxing Association of America champion. His young career record, seven wins with three losses, five of those seven wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, two inches tall, 1.88 meters, he weighed in at 188 pounds, 85.2 kilos. He's here tonight from Ontario, Oregon. Correction, Ontario, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Robert the White Dragon, Thomas. Once again, your referee is Adam Martinez. Adam Martinez set to officiate hey, the feature attraction. There's David the Machine right after 34 making his glory debut. And there's 22-year-old Robert Thomas in his fourth glory appearance. Fight! The bell and round one scheduled for three three-minute rounds of the glory middleweight division. Thomas in the white gloves, Radif in the black. You mentioned that Thomas wanted to get off to a faster start. He admitted he could be overly calm, wanted to Oh, that's a body kick from Radif, and that was like a gunshot echoing throughout the confines of the Magnus Arena. And he set it up perfectly with those two punches. Yeah, of course, Thomas talking about his background as a Muay Thai fighter, and, and Stephen, as you well know, the, in Muay Thai, it takes a round or two to begin to, to, to fight. <laughs> they do that for betting reasons, Right, though. right. Back to back. Because fight. knockouts are discouraged in Muay Thai. Right. Well, not from where I'm sitting, but I agree with you. I know what you're saying in the traditional sense. Oh, in, in Thailand. Right. Yes, yes, of course. Fight. But everyone loves a knockout. Yeah, but they would like to bet. But uh, Tom is stalking oh. Radif here. Yeah, and he nails him with the body kick. And you can catch the kick, but you have to deliver a, a strike immediately. That's what Radif did. So a good start here between Radif and Thomas. A couple of hard hitters in the middle, middleweight division. Radif has got such a strange rhythm. He was fighting. Right. He almost got around and got what? ready for a hip toss. Yeah, and really, if you look at previous fight footage of Radif, he's, he's relentless to say the least. He'll be pushing forward and throwing strikes with all that he has in him. And we've seen a glimpse of that thus far as the bigger Thomas now walking him down back to the clinch. And in right. glory, you have up to fight. five seconds to initiate your way out, gentlemen. an effective knee strike in the clinch. Spinning back fist that misses by Radif. Yeah, it was stopped cold by a low kick by Thomas. Thomas from Cambridge, Ontario, right, under head coach Chris Q at Mass Thai Boxing. Right. Began he training at the clinches, age gentlemen. of 14. Fight. Within a couple of months, went to Mexico for his first amateur fight. Interesting that Thomas is basically walking Radif down, but he refuses to throw the jab. Oh, nice right hand, though, and a knee, and another knee from Thomas. Has Radif in the corner. Radif fights his way out in the final 45 seconds of the opening round. And Radif with a good little combination in there. Close. Right in that clinch. 30 seconds left in the opening round. Both have had their opportunities. Nice right hand through the guard by Radif. Left hook to the body by Thomas. Misses with that right uppercut. But he landed that kind of right hook from, from Orthodox. Knee and left hook lands for Thomas. Oh, he hit the body. There's a right uppercut. And now Thomas beginning to find his rhythm with 10 seconds left in the round. Radif with the kick out of the corner. I think the altitude is definitely starting to have an effect on the Frenchman. That along with the punch combinations there at the end for Robert Thomas. It's a competitive fight, or a competitive round early on. Randolph definitely came to rumble. So, you want to hear what it sounds like to get kicked? Listen to this. This was early in the first round. Oh. Yes, that was it. Correct. Sounded like a baseball bat. And there's that uppercut off that right hook on the inside by Thomas, followed by that knee. Second tell. Let's go. Let's go. Out. 
tee up. Indicating that it is round two. Oh, so five. that snap, crackle, pop of a body kick. Like you said, it sounded like a baseball bat. And for uh, Robert Thomas's uh, ball team in Canada, the Toronto Blue Jays, not a good start to the ALDS. Down 2 nothing to the Texas Rangers as we begin round number two. Spinning hook kick attempt by Raddick in the black gloves. Robert Thomas in the white gloves. Almost hit, almost clashed heads there. Yeah. Fight. So getting a little dirty here on the inside, Fight. a little chippy. Fight. Radoff was about to spin, and he caught Fight. a left hook. Fight. Thomas with the edge in total strikes. Both of them landing well, though. Near 50% each. Yeah, that's no good. An elbow. An elbow. Oh, he's I'm gonna check him, okay? So referee Adam Martinez letting Robert okay. Thomas know that he knows it was an accidental yeah. elbow. Yeah. Gonna check on Radov. Going, going, going. Good. I'm gonna warn him, okay? Just a warning. You can watch when you spin with that. You can't yeah. hit with the elbow, Sorry. okay? Of course, from Muay Thai, you can hit with the elbows, not under glory rules. In. It was a distance Ready? thing. Right. Right. Spinning Ready? back for you need Fight. distance. Yeah. And they touch gloves as a sign of sportsmanship, and uh, we resume hostilities here at the Magnus Arena. There's a push kick from Thomas. As Radov cornered momentarily, Radov using lateral movement. Superman punch. Oh, high kick blocked. Jump front nice. kick, which missed. It was a little short. All right. Fight. Not a lot of fluidity yet, but some interesting strikes and you're seeing it unfold here where every both fighters trying to impose their will on the other and now Thomas beginning to find his rhythm as Radif in the corner again allows him to come out though misses with the right uppercut catches the kick and that one was under the armpit Radif is like a little Wolverine he wait on the ropes then he'll try to thorn his way out and he lands a couple of nice right hands counter left hook to the jaw by Thomas Outside low kick by Radov, knee up the middle by Thomas, backs Radov again into the corner. That doesn't take advantage of it. The thing that puzzles me is that I don't think uh, Robert Thomas has thrown a single jab in this whole fight. And that would seem to be the weapon that would set up the right hand and the right low kick. Sets everything up and you're right, he's going for broke here. Yeah. He's... Mixing up the power shots and the knees and the kicks. Yeah, he's, he's leading with a power shot. Right. Fight. Final 45 seconds of the middle round. By doing that, he's letting Radov have more effectiveness because it ends up being a brawl. Radov, who's been busy in all kinds of fighting disciplines, Muay Thai, MMA, boxing, and kickboxing, trying to find success here in his first foray in the glory ring, has the experience advantage as a pro. But Robert Thomas with a decorated amateur career and already Three fights under his glory belt. This is his fourth, and there was a, a shot from Radov and a knee from Thomas, and that one hurt. So in the final stages of the second round, Thomas beginning to assert himself with the knees from the tie block. And Radov taking umbrage with that kick after the bell. That was a really good shot, actually, but it was, it was just a split second. He started throwing it right before the bell rang. How do you score that last round? I think that was a 10-9 round for Robert Thomas. Thomas stalking Radov. Radov is fading a little bit here. He's still running tough, but beautiful action from the clinch there for Robert Thomas. And here's the bell, and there was a kick right at the end. It was right on the borderline. Thomas didn't do that intentionally. So I've got Robert Thomas ahead of this fight by two rounds. Last round, let's go. Last round, Robert. Fight! Third and final round. Robert Thomas of Canada in the white gloves. Francis David Radoff in the black gloves. And Thomas immediately goes back to attacking with the knees. Break! Radoff 
trying to navigate the distance. Comes inside. That combination blocked by the high guard of Thomas. Right. What would you like to see Radif do here? Right. As we look at strikes landed pretty close, but still in favor of Thomas. Radif, uh, according to your unofficial scorecard, Stephen needs a stoppage. Anything you'd like to see him do differently? I'd like to see him fight in air, fight. Throw more overhand punches and be first. Because right now he's waiting for in the Thomas to be first, and that's why he's losing. There it is, the jab. But behind the jab, you got to throw something like a right hand or a oh. kick. Left hook on the break by Thomas, and he continues to just pepper away. Radif coming back, but breathing, taking those deep breaths here in the high altitude of the sweep. Knocks Radif to the canvas, will not here. be ruled a knockdown, yeah. however. That was beautiful, Hi. because he didn't even have to catch the leg to do that. Left hook to the body by Thomas, changing levels. Hi. See, this is the kind of fight Radif needs, but he needs to throw more punches because Thomas is the busier fighter right. here Jumping when they're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. From Hi. White Dragon, there's a spinning back kick right to the, uh, attempted to deliver by Radif. A minute and a half left in the foot. The back kick is a good strategy for Radif because that is a game changer. You can really Fight. hurt somebody Fight. with a back kick. Problem is, you need right. a lot of right. gas right. 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 in your tank, and I Fight. think that Radif is fading here. Just ask Gegar Mousasi, the uh, pride veteran, stopped for the first time via strikes courtesy of Uriah Hall at the famous Saitama Super Arena. The recent UFC battle is Thomas goes to work on the body. Radif now, nice short right uppercut. Yeah, Radif is hanging tough, but just landing a few shots here and there is not going to do it. He's got to do some serious damage. A minute left. House kick just missed by Thomas. Inside low kick by Radif. Spinning back kick again, expends a lot of energy. If it doesn't pay dividends in the high altitude, you're gonna pay for it. And misses with the spinning back fist. He's doing the right thing though, he's trying with a big shot. Yeah, he's looking for the hit. Yes, yes, he is. Needing the channel is inner Doug Flutie here with 30 seconds left in the final round. It's a good job by the referee to let them fight in the clinch for that five seconds. Yes, good stuff. And Robert Thomas, much Faster, busy, and Radif now coming forward. So they've been going back and forth, throwing a lot of strikes. This is the and best round. Matchup. This is the best round of the fight because they're both fighting back so hard. So a great finish to a great middleweight matchup between Robert Thomas and Glory newcomer David Radif. Ah! They're going to the judges after a spirited affair here in Denver. That was a tough one to score, but if you go by the numbers, which we'll see shortly. Robert Thomas had that one. I got a 30-27 for Robert Thomas. The thing was that Radif was in the fight the whole time. He fought back the whole time. So it wasn't like he was just getting blown out of there. Thomas would be successful, but so would Radif on occasion, but just a lesser occasion than Robert Thomas. David Radif with a, a decent effort in his glory debut, but also showing signs of the high altitude, and it will be up to the judges to determine if he goes back to Belfort, France with a victory. He was in tough against Robert the White Dragon Thomas, who hopes to improve to 2-2 two and two in the glory ring. As we'll look at the strike count. Numbers just a barometer. 74 of 184 for Thomas and 65 for 131, 50% for David Radif. So again, very close in many ways as we uh, revisit some of the action. Radif coming forward with punches and kicks. Thomas, there was that spinning attempt at a spinning back fist, caught him with the elbow, then the knees in the corner. Thomas going to work on Radif and just after the bell landed that right kick looking to shave off Radif's beard. Radif with the short right uppercut which was a useful weapon in his toolbox. But back and forth they went. Thomas peppering his head with punches trying for another knee. 
After nine minutes of action, it's up to the three judges chosen by the Colorado State Boxing Commission to determine the victor, and the decision is in. Let's go to Tim Hughes. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the scores. Judge Ramirez scores the bout 29-28, Radoff. Judge Thrasher, 30-27, Thomas. And Judge Johnson, 30-27 for your winner by split decision, Robert Thomas! So on this Canadian Thanksgiving weekend, Robert Thomas has reason to be thankful. He picks up a win, a hard-fought victory here at the Glory Super Fight Series, improving to two and two and spoiling the glory debut of David the Machine Radoff. Steven Quadros, take it away. Robert, uh, he took everything you had to give. Tough guy, huh? Yeah, definitely a tough guy. Yeah, I was uh, trying to put the combinations together, but man, I was exhausted. <laughs> what did you think about the split decision? Um, I thought I did enough to win all three rounds, and two of the judges saw it that way, so. But, uh, I don't know, maybe he landed a more significant boxing shot, so that's how the other refs saw it that way. Now, you're in the middleweight division. There's a lot of activity, especially later tonight. Wayne Barrett is fighting Dustin Jacoby, and also your buddy Joe Schilling is fighting. Who would you like to fight next? Um, actually, I'd like to fight Alex Pereira. I uh, took a fight on last minute in Brazil. I fought him in his hometown, and uh, I'd definitely like to avenge that one. And he's around me, around, he's like, seventh or eighth in the ranking and I'm so uh, I think that'd be a perfect fight for me that would be a great fight to see congratulations one more time on a great performance let's hear it for him one more time Robert Thomas